Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Andre Philip. I'm from Czech Republic, from Prague. Uh, and I would like to talk about the, the special security project which has started in, in the Czech Republic. Uh, before I start a little bit about my company, uh, CZNIC, which is the company name, is uh, domain name registry in CZ. We are middle-sized registry with about 1.2 million domains. And the, the special feature of the registry is that about 38% of them is signed by Helian Sex, so the security is issue we really address very often. Uh, but more than registry, we have more people involved in R&D, in the research and development group called CZNIC Labs. And, and we do a various projects, uh, various open source projects. I think BIRD was presented at this forum um, a, couple of months, uh, a couple of years ago. And not DNS, uh, high performance DNS server, uh, also a very interesting thing maybe for, for this community. But um, to, the, to the project tourists, uh, we, we started about a year ago, and, and the idea was um, called very, uh, very nice name project of, of shared cyber defense. And we wanted to address three main issues. Uh, first of all, we wanted to do uh, some security research. Uh, we wanted to improve uh, the area of end user security uh, and also to improve the situation of, of the home routers, so those small devices that everyone has home and, and you know, doesn't touch it, but it works for him. So the security research. Currently, uh, we do a lot of stuff in security field. We, we, we run HoneyNet. Uh, we, we collect a lot of DNS-related data. We do many uh, anomaly detection um, techniques on, on top of the data. Uh, uh, but we have uh, very little information about the, the, you know, the end users, the, the network, the, the, the ends of the, those networks. So we wanted to have some more data from this field. So uh, that we came with the, the idea to, to put some probes closer to the, to the end users and, and see what happens there. Uh, we wanted to distribute those probes to as many networks as possible in, within the country. And we wanted to run the same algorithm we use for DNS, the IP anomaly de detection mechanism. Uh, to help the end users, uh, uh, we wanted uh, to, to create a, um, a firewall, data adaptive firewall, which will be based on those data we will collect or we will collect from the other parties. Uh, and one of them might be the, the National CERT team, uh, CZ, which is also run, run by us, actually. And, and that team has cooperation with many other agencies, collecting very, uh, a lot of information about uh, some security or some compromised devices. Uh, and um, the third issue, the, the, the harm routers, so her routers, uh, you probably know, all of you know the, the situation. You know, they, are, they, are, they usually don't have good, if any, support of IPv6. Uh, they have many problems with DNS, uh, DNSSEC. They ne I, I haven't heard about any you know, performing DNSSEC validation. Um, if, you, if you buy it, the only thing you can just switch it on, configure it, but you cannot do anything else. You cannot usually legally access it, so there's no support for any other application. Um, those devices have uh, just a limited set of security features, again, if, if any. And one big issue, there is not an easy way how to upgrade them. Uh, those producers, manufacturers, mainly in Southeast Asia, they just ship it uh, to, to Europe, US, and three months later it's sold sell to the end users, and uh, the firmware is one year old with many bugs. There is usually none newer updated uh, firmware, and if exists, you know, those, those people who, who got those boxes are not able to, to upgrade it. So, Sometimes it's very frustrating. Uh, there's a lot of bugs in those devices, and, and currently some of the uh, bot botnets uses, use those devices, so, and, and people are not aware of it. So they, they just forget it's, it's, com it's a normal computer running in your home 24 hours, and, and it, may, it may do a lot of bad stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, so back to the data collection. So, uh, we set a goal to have about 1,000 of, of those boxes. Uh, we wanted to give it for free uh, to the people for, for tax purposes. Uh, it's officially uh, a lease for three years, and the price is uh, five US, uh, US cents, so really uh, just a symbolic price. And uh, we, we tried to find uh, some hardware that would be, uh, you know, without mechanical parts, uh, nice enough that you could use it as your home router. But on the other hand, powerful enough to to 
to forward about one gigabit of traffic uh, and in meantime doing some security analysis. So we couldn't find any hardware on the market, so we decided to, to de develop our own. Um, and that's how the, the hardware development and part of, of the research started. Um, also, when we are doing such a hardware, quite powerful, we wanted to this hardware to have some additional features to increase the value for the end users. So it should have a, a lot of ports and a possibility to run as a print server, NAS, and stuff like that. So uh, that's how the road to Tourist uh, was developed. We, we start development from scratch, and, and this is the, the final of it. So it looks like this. It's an aluminum blue box, which is, which is given to the people. It looks like a normal ham router, right? Uh, but inside the heart is, is Freescale 1.2 gigahertz processor, uh, about 2 gigabyte of, of memory connected by DDR3 slot. Uh, a quarter gigabyte of flash memory, which is used for the operating system, and, and a 60 megabyte of another flash, which is used as a backup, a backup system in case anything fails. Uh, it has uh, five LAN ports, gigabit LAN ports, which are connected through a, a two gigabit lines uh, to the CPU, and one one port, which is directly connected to CPU, so basically six gigabit ports. Uh, it has two mini PCI Express interfaces inside. Uh, one, each, one is occupied by the Wi-Fi card, uh, and uh, we use three times three MIMO card, but of course it can be changed. It's, it's just a card inside. It has two USB two uh, slots, and internally a lot of you know pin headers, many internal interfaces. So uh, it's, it's quite flexible if you want to play with that. So some URAP port, SPI, I2C, uh, I2C uh, GPIO pins for, for whatever purposes. So um, quite flexible if you want to play with that. We also included one uh, um, micro SDHC slot, um, so you can, you can put there another flash memory if you wish. We, we thought it might be helpful, but, but at the end of the day, we, we, we couldn't find any usage for it. But some people use it as a, as a storage, so it's, it's free if you want to use it. Um, Although it's quite powerful and it's really capable of forwarding more than gigabit of traffic, uh, it doesn't have high power consumption, so you don't have to be afraid if you, if you switch it on in your home. Uh, it varies uh, on the load and, and how much um, Wi-Fi is used and stuff like that from 9 to 14 watts. Uh, and of course, but you can, use, uh, you can use also the USB to power out the other devices, so then in that case then the consumption increases, but that's of course your option. Uh, and it's, uh, the whole thing is, is uh, licensed up under open source, so, so all the plans, uh, how to manufacture it, are on the website, so if you want to uh, make your own devices, uh, you are free to do it. Uh, so this is it, uh, as I said, and, and you can see inside, nothing surprises, but nothing mechanical, no, no fan, nothing like that. Uh, it has one killer feature, something that really people love. Um, love um, you know, it's... Uh, uh, maybe you, you saw that problem if you have some device with very uh, with some LEDs that uh, it's not very convenient if it's switched on in a room where you also sleep, which some people have the problems. So that's why uh, there is a button at the back which which can dim all those LEDs, and and that's um, feature beloved by many students running this device in in their in their um, you know sleeping room. Um, those those slides are really um, software manageable. So many people use it for for various purposes. Uh, I I don't know if you if you if you remember the David Hasselhoff um, movie series with with Knight Rider smart car. So many people use the same feature, you know, flashing from left to right and back with the with the with the tourist lights as well. So uh, people really like to play with that. So uh, a little bit about software. It's uh, it's Linux-based distribution, OpenWRT. Uh, we that's not developed from scratch. We we um, use a lot of good stuff that was done there. However, we added um, um, some other features. We we added our own configuration wizard because OpenWRT is perfect for geeks. But if you distribute those uh, those routers to normal people that are not aware of of, of network. You, you have to make something very simple for them. So we, we develop our own configuration wizard and also uh, in edit a netcon flyer uh, to, to tourists. So this wizard uses that layer, but also th this layer can be done uh, by some other, uh, other applications, of course. So that's the way how uh, many tourists can be configured automatically using netconf interface. 
something uh, that's uh, very important for us, uh, it's, it's able to be aut automatically updated. Uh, so, um, you know, if there is some, some security problems, all the tourists are updated. Uh, but if in case there is uh, that the update uh, requires reboot, you can, for example, set up um, the, the tourists. For example, if there is a uh, need for reboot, please inform me by email. And if I do not react in, in seven days, reboot it in, in 3 a.m., for example. This is the way how the people set it up. So, so the, the reboot doesn't you know, break any operations uh, that you need in your home. Uh, it communicates with the central server. Uh, you know, the, there's a crypto chip uh, with, um, with some key material, so that's the way how uh, it submits the, uh, the data to us. Uh, there is one process called that, that collects the data that's the only mandatory process if you join this project. Uh, otherwise, you know, device is open, you can, you can access uh, it and, and modify whatever, however you want. Uh, and uh, we have also an, an Android application uh, that can that can uh, manage this device, so if you don't have to log in into a computer to look what's uh, what's going on in this device. Uh, this is just how the results look like. This is an example of Wi-Fi setup. Uh, as you can see, you can use your QR code just to configure your uh, uh, your phone or tablet or whatever. Uh, a little bit about the data collection. The, the, in the, the, the central part uh, is it's, uh, a daemon called MicroCollect or uCollect, if you wish. Uh, it's a it's a pluggable system for for data analysis. It's something like you know pickup module or something like that. It's a heart of the active security monitoring system. Uh, we also collect all the firewall logs. So if any unsuccessful attempts to connect to the router, um, uh, we we look at the router logs. So upgrade status, some software problems. We also collect some other data like temperature, load, memory, and flash utilization. You know, it, it, this is our first hardware attempt, so we wanted to be sure that those devices are okay, that they are not too hot, and, and so on. So we collect all those data. Um, and they are sent to the central server using the, the crypto chip, as I, as I mentioned. So uh, the micro collect has about, currently about six modules. First is called count, it's, it's not for us, it's mainly for the end user. It counts how many packets and f which protocol family and which, uh, which kind, you know, went uh, were for forwarded through the device. Um, and this is displayed on the end user portal. Uh, another, uh, the, the important one is buckets. Uh, that's the module that, uh, uh, that does the IP animal detection. So basically the, the device looks at the normal data traffic flow and if there is something suspicious, it's make uh, 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 just an imprint of, of these traffics and it's send it to, to us. It's, it's just a hash imprint of it. And if we collect more such hashes, we know there's something suspicious and we ask the devices to, to identify a little bit more what the traffic was about. So that's the way how we, how we do the anomaly detection analysis. Uh, there is also something, again, as a service for the end users, uh, Puffet, Puffet Network Speed Monitor, uh, bandwidth, so, so you can see how much you pay your ISP and how much actually you did get. Uh, there is also a NetFlow-like data collector, which is used specifically for, for some suspicious IP addresses. We know that they are center of some botnets or, or something like that. So uh, uh, this NetFlow is used specif specifically for data. We know that they are, that are probably uh, suspicious. Um, Another module is called, uh, I don't know why, but it's called SNF. Uh, it's, it's a module that uh, monitors, uh, or uh, that pings to some high profile sites, so we know how the reachability of the network is, is performing. And also it does TNS resolution and also uh, looks at the SSL certificates uh, of those sites, so we know there is no man in the middle attack and stuff like that. Uh, it's just to be sure that there is nothing wrong between us and the tourists. Um, and also it, it may do some sort of net neutrality measuring. Um, uh, last uh, last uh, deployed uh, module is called Spoof. Uh, we use it to, to test ISPs whether they conform to uh, BCP38. Um, uh, we have a uh, we have some club uh, in the Czech Republic of, of ISPs that um, that have some higher security standards. This is called Phoenix. It's associated by 
by the local in internet exchange point NICCZ, and and uh, this is the way how we test that those ISPs that join this project are actually uh, doing what they declare, for example. Um, the botnet monitoring, the, the you know the, in the key part of it, we are trying to find some botnets, some, some malware, something wrong on the network. Um, we, we are getting from various sources some uh, uh, list of IP addresses of, uh, of uh, CAC botnet centers. Uh, so uh, we capture, as I said, flow data from the, from the traffic that goes to, uh, to those IP addresses. And if we see something suspicious, we report it to the end users because that's obviously probably some virus or something in their network. Uh, and if users want, they, they might want to trigger capturing the, the whole communication because we, we never go into the uh, packet lo load, we just, we just stay in the header part of, of packets uh, because we don't really want, we don't want to, to tap wire uh, the end users communication. But if, if uh, the user triggers, we, we can go deeper and, and look at the, at the communication and, and use it for some uh, research purposes. Um, we detected about um, 20 uh, uh, infected computers, about roughly 2% of, of the current um, end users, which I expected a little bit more, so um, there is probably a high percentage of geeks in the, in the project, uh, as this is not you know, a project for the normal end users. Uh, the fiber logs, uh, we analyzed about 6 million logs a day, uh, log entries a day. Um, we, we try to find the most offensive attackers, uh, which is like the number of, of clients that were attacked or, or number of ports and stuff like that. Uh, we also include some data from the HoneyNet, and and from those data we collect the uh, we we make it the gray list, which is again used for the Nef NetFlow analysis later on. So if we see some strong attacker, we create a gray list, inform the the tourists to to send us the flow data, and we can explore a little bit more what's this attack about, um, which helped us to find some some misconfigured devices like uh, some people as tourists is open, they can play with it. So either Turis or some device behind him was open to DNS re reflection attacks. We, we found some Samba, uh, suspicious Samba communication from the end of this network to some Chinese side, so it was probably some attack. So again, trying to help the, the end users to fix the problems in their local networks. Um, and, and one more thing uh, we are working on is we are trying to find a patterns of similar attack behaviors. So um, if some if some IP addresses, you know, attacks many, many devices, and some other does the same with the same pattern, that's probably the either the same virus or the same group of um, um, devices trying to attack something. So uh, we, we use some uh, techniques used for text mining to find some similar things uh, in, 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 those, in those behaviors. And again, we collect some lists of IP addresses that probably are, are, are affected by the same virus, or we, for example, find a network which, which does the same kind of attack, so it's probably not a virus, but probably somebody using some, some form of, of, of servers to attacking the internet. Um, and again, we, uh, we, we cooperate with the national uh, cybersecurity team, so it's that which is, again, part of our company. So um, uh, we, we, we are getting data from them, and this data comes from um, other security teams or some, some big companies uh, that, are, uh, that are providing those data. And um, we also use those data for, for some firewall use on the, on the tourists. So, so the tourists can block some certain iframes or certain, um, certain web pages that, that are infected and stuff like that. Uh, many, many of sites were blocked already. And we also uh, provide some data in, in case of some, some interesting attack. I don't know if you are familiar with the Synology uh, problem, uh, but when this, this problem appeared, we provided some data to Synology to, to help to understand what was going on. Uh, something, we, it's, it's in progress. Uh, we are working on a module that would help the people understand what are the devices in his local area doing, uh, you know, accounting data and providing list of uh, 
uh, w what devices they communicate with and stuff like that. that. That's not something that would be collected by us. That's just a service for the for the end users. Um, there were several uh, TVs that um, you know, smart TVs that they are communicating with the manufacturers and and sending strange data. Um, so we would like to warn the end users that this is happening. Um, and also, we, we analyzed the unsuccessful TCP connections from LAN to, to the internet. If, if there is too many unsuccessful TCP connections from, from your home network to the outside, that means that you are either infected and, and your computer is trying to attack the, uh, the internet or some sites on the internet, uh, or, or, your, or the virus is trying to contact some, some short-lived IP addresses for, for common and concur centers. So again, some sign that something is wrong in your network and must be fixed. A and we started some cooperation with antivirus manufacturers. Uh, uh, end user see, sees much more than um, if, if uh, he's using the normal harm router because we have the, the whole website portal which shows a lot of data uh, that we collect from the router so so we can easily you know all look what what data we collect what, how many packets are sent in certain time period which protocol stuff like that um, we also provide a lot of tutorials that's that's the part that we would like to give some a, another advantage to the end users so there are, there is a lot of tutorials how to uh, how to change to return to to NAS server to to use this as a DN DLNA server um, uh, to, uh, to have VPN to VPN server or client if, if, if the user wish, if has more connection to the internet, 3G backup, uh, and stuff like that. Many people start to, to provide um, tutorials as well. You know, there are some crazy people that use tourists, for example, as a sound server for his bathroom and, and you know, stuff like that. Uh, people play with it. Um, um, and, and that's why we have the end user forum where people communicate and, and tell us the story. This is uh, just a screenshot of, of it. Um, a little bit about the legal basis of the project. Uh, as I said, it's, it's technically it's leasing for three years, and after three years you can buy the device again for five uh, US cents, so uh, for nothing ma mainly. Uh, we have several conditions in the agreement. One is that it has to be your main router to the internet, because otherwise we wouldn't collect the, the most uh, interesting data, and, and the sh people shouldn't switch it off, uh, at least not, not very often. Now, on the other hand, uh, and of course the, the co data collection uh, process cannot be, uh, cannot be killed, but on the other hand, we provide open access, so you can, you can SSH to the device, completely change it, the configuration, play with it, uh, uh, you, you can do whatever you wish if you don't stop the data collection stuff. Um, uh, of course, uh, probably uh, you might think of the privacy because we collect a lot of data from the end users. So we started really very carefully. We, we first we consulted this uh, this project with the local uh, personal data uh, protection authority. And then uh, you know we we. Um, when we prepare the agreement, we send it to the community uh, and ask for feedback. So we get a lot of feedback. We modify the contract. Uh, everything we do is open source, so everybody can verify that uh, what what we declare we do, we really do. So that's um, that was probably the reasons why we got a positive Big Brother Award uh, in 2013, and we were uh, named as an example how uh, data, private data collection can be done correctly. So some interesting facts. Uh, uh, it's uh, roughly a thousand devices online, uh, transfer about six terabytes of data every day. A um, small percentage uh, is IPv6. Uh, we register about 8,000 IP addresses that tries to connect to more than 20 devices, so probably some attackers. And uh, we, we did some six major uh, releases of, of the operating system uh, without breaking any device, which is great. And, and several minor releases, uh, for example, when the Heartbleed uh, attack appeared, we, we were able to fix it in a few days. The same for, for the sh shell shock and stuff like that. So we are really trying to be quick uh, in those releases. We have some early stage cooperation with various parties. Uh, first of them is Comcast, uh, who provided some fi financial support for this uh, program. Thank you very much, Comcast, for that. Uh, we are uh, working co cooperation with RIPE Atlas, 
uh, Ripe NCC who would like to uh, make a software module Ripe Atlas, uh, uh, you know, running on on Turis. So Turis would would, would act like a, a Ripe Atlas uh, probe, uh, and we we have some cooperation with them. Antivirus companies and also the the National uh, Czech Telecommunication Office, the the Czech FCC is very interesting to uh, to have uh, to to be able to use some data about the the traffic, so so they can measure so so they can measure that uh, you know declared data in the agreement are really uh, uh, sell sold to sell to the uh, to the end users. So something we we are currently discussing. Um, some uh, future, we, we decided to have a new version 1.1, new hardware version of the Turix, Turix router. It's basically the same thing. Uh, we, we did some minor hardware improvements like USB 3.0 slot uh, interface and also a SIM card slot, so it can be easily used for some LTE router. Uh, we would like to manufacture again 1,000 pieces and, and use the same model, so it's just the extension of, of the current topic, nothing. Um, nothing uh, new, uh, and because VDSL or ADSL, DSL connection is quite popular in our country, uh, we um, are working on a very small factor, you know, tiny tiny interface, um, a VDSL interface, basically VDSL to, to Ethernet bridge that could be USB powered, so you can just plug it to, to your uh, to your terrace, and you don't need any uh, other third party modem to be able to connect to to the DSL network. So, um, oh, sorry. Uh, last slide, because you know we we got many requests for many people after we presented to us. Hi, can I buy this device? It's cool, and we we say no, guys. So we we are not for profit company. We we are not a manufacturer of hardware. So we we never th thought that it, it could be interesting for anybody except a research project, but. Um, on the other hand, uh, we have some harder team, some very good experience how to make those devices, and also the software I think is unique. Uh, so we, we decided to make a, a new project for next year, so it's, it's, it's a future project, not, not ready yet. But um, we would like to make a, another version of Tourist, which uh, is going to be called Tourist Slide. Uh, and um, it should be some educational board, something like Raspberry P Pi, but, but in networking world, you know, with, with a lot of uh, Ethernet interfaces and, and other interfaces, and lacking, for example, HDMI interface, but something that can be used by, by network people for playing, working, whatever. Um, it should be a little bit, uh, little bit less powerful than, than the original tourist, but still able to forward one gigabit of traffic. Um, and um, uh, we would like to, uh, f to use some kickstart model of, of crowd uh, sourcing to finance this project. So the old target is to make boards in, in uh, price roughly $100. And we don't expect to, uh, to you know, to, to, to get money for the development, we just need to cover the variable to cost, so which means mainly really the manufacture of the board. It's, it's a not-for-profit not project, it not, it's not something for sale. Uh, we don't expect any profits from that, but um, that's to address people that, that came to us and said, please make uh, hundreds of boxes to me, I, I'm happy to pay, uh, and we say, well, we cannot give it to you because we need you this for the, this project. And, and honestly, the price of this, this box is quite high. You know, it's 1,000 pieces manufactured in, in European Union, so it doesn't make sense to, for commercial market. But this tourist life would be in larger volume, and, and maybe it, uh, it would find somebody, some people to play with. We'll see. So I think I made my presentation in time. Thank you very much. If you, wanna, if you are interested in, in light, uh, tourist light, there is a web page, light.tourist.cz. Please go there and pre-register. We, we will not spam you, don't be afraid. We will just send you information once the, the project is ready. Thank you very much. We do, ha we do have time for a question or two. Dan, is that you? Yes, it is. Hey, how's it going, man? Um, Dan McGrain, uh, Hopkins Applied Physics Lab. So did you think about using Raspberry Pi type standard off-the-shelf devices to begin with? or were they too low power or didn't have gigabit wired or those kind of things? I mean, I guess I was trying to figure out why you, you went the custom route. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't... Why, why you built custom hardware as opposed to basing it on something like Raspberry Pi? Oh yeah, um, have you seen Raspberry Pi? It's a very good device, I like it, but the problem is 
the networking part is really poor. You know, it's it's USB connected Ethernet port, so it's nothing you can use seriously if if you want to make a um, a network device. So that's why we decided to to make something different. Raspberry Pi is is excellent if if you want to do your uh, home DV, uh, DVD player or MP3 player or something like that. It, it's it's very strong in multimedia, uh, but it has very poor uh, features or ability in in the networking world. So well, there's why. better ones out these days that have gigabit connectivity and all that, but they are pretty recent. Yeah. I'm sorry. Is the question? I'm sorry. Yeah. You're just saying that there's better recent ones. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks, Andre. Thank you.